On the 26th of October 1941 in Minsk, a young teenage girl was paraded throughout the streets of the city, and she was taken to her execution at the hands of the German soldiers. Throughout the Second World War, there were lots of men and women who carried out acts of defiance and resistance against the Germans, but many were executed for their involvement in these. But for every act of resistance carried out by the partisans and other groups, there would be huge reprisals for those living in occupied lands, and these would be performed by the Germans. For every German soldier killed, dozens of civilians would be slaughtered, and the Germans often liquidated and massacred villages in revenge attacks. This brought different resistance groups into conflict with each other, as the cost of reprisals was very high. But today we look at the execution of a teenage girl, Masha Brushkina, who was at the age of 17, executed for her involvement in a resistance group. As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Maria, or Masha Buskina, was born in 1924 and she would live in Minsk with her mother. As a young girl, she was very intelligent and she read many different books and she was above her peers at school with regards to her studies. She had very good grades and it was clear that Masha had a huge future in front of her and she would then graduate from school in 1941 at the age of 17. But she was working at this time as a youth leader for the Young Pioneers, a youth group linked to the Soviet Union and the Communists. In this group, young children attended summer camps and they learned different skills, and it was hoped that these members would go on to be part of the communist society later on. But during the Second World War, the group contributed to the war effort, and thousands of them would give their lives for the Soviets in battles as they fought. They then took part in resistance activities against the Nazi occupiers. The pioneers also helped on the home front in the Soviet Union. They would work in agriculture when they could. But Masha Bruskina was a communist who was a member of the Minsk resistance, despite just being a teenager herself. But Belarus fell very quickly under German occupation, which began on the 22nd of June 1941, and it ended in August 1944, as the Soviets would push the Germans back. It's believed that during the German occupation, around 1.5 million civilians were slaughtered by the German forces around this region. Because of this, a Soviet partisan movement was in Belarus, and the groups would hide out in the woods and in swamps. They would then take the fight to the Germans whenever they could. They blew up and destroyed railway tracks, cut communication wires, and would hit fuel dumps and ambush German soldiers who were on patrol. There were many different acts of sabotage also carried out, but the partisans were treated terribly if caught by the Germans. Groups such as the Derlevanger Brigade were ordered to wipe out resistance elements, and then punish and execute those in areas where the resistance worked. Derlevanger himself was known for rounding up civilians, then locking them in barns before these were then set on fire. Masha Bruskina during the German occupation remained in Minsk, and as the Germans rampaged through the city, they rounded up 100,000 Jews, who were then sent to a ghetto in the city. But the Minsk ghetto was known for its awful conditions, before the prisoners were then sent to extermination camps where they were killed straight away. Many were slaughtered inside of the ghetto by gunshot, and many others succumbed to a lack of food, disease and a horrific conditions that were inside the ghetto. But Masha managed to escape, and she then went into hiding in the area inside of Minsk, out of the ghetto, and she dyed her hair and assumed the persona of a Russian girl named Anya. After this she then joined the local resistance, who were planning to break out and liberate wounded soldiers and Soviet officials and officers who had been held inside of a prison hospital and had been wounded. But Masha Bruskina volunteered to work in the hospital, which had been set up inside of the Minsk Polytechnic Institute, and it was established as a place where Red Army soldiers who had been wounded would be kept locked inside by the Germans. But Masha worked shifts on the wards, caring for the wounded, but she was then involved in smuggling medicine, civilian clothes and false papers to the soldiers inside of the hospital. These were then passed on to them, and simply the Soviet prisoners would then get changed and would leave out the front door before becoming members of the resistance. A breakout was planned for mid-October 1941, but Masha was then advised to leave Minsk and Belarus, as she was still considered a child and could have got away. But she refused to leave her friends, resistance members and hometown, but she really should have. A patient then told the Germans that Masha was helping Soviet soldiers escape, and she was then arrested on the 14th of October 1941, by the Wehrmacht's 707th Infantry Division. Masha Bruskina was then sent to a prison, where she was tortured and she was badly beaten, 
but she refused to give over any information about resistance activities to the Germans. She maintained her sense of humour despite the torture, and she said, In any case, there's no chance I'll die of starvation. But whilst in prison, she wrote to her mother and said, I am tormented by the thought that I have caused you great worry. Don't worry. Nothing bad has happened to me. I swear to you that you will have no further unpleasantness because of me. If you can, please send my dress, my green blouse and white socks. I want to be dressed decently when I leave here. But as she gave over no information, she was considered a lost cause, and Masha Bruschina was sentenced to death for her crimes and resistance, and to send a clear message to the people of Minsk, the Germans would order her horrific execution, which was carried out in public. Let's remember that Masha Bruschina was just a young teenage girl, and she was just 17 when she was brought to her execution. The Germans wanted to scare the locals into staying away from resistance movements against the occupiers, and Masha Bruschina was brought out in front of a huge crowd. She was paraded in the streets, and a placard was placed around her neck, and it read in German and Russian, We are partisans, and have shot at German soldiers. But she was then brought out with a couple of others for her execution. They were then forced to wear similar signs. But following the parade of the condemned, she was taken to her execution site. Masha Bruschina's execution and what happened next was witnessed by hundreds of onlookers, and one witness said, Before noon, I saw the armed Germans and Lithuanian soldiers appear on the street. From over the bridge, they escorted three people with their hands tied behind their backs. In the middle, there was a girl with a signboard on her chest. They were led up to the yeast factory gate. I noticed how calmly these people walked. The girl did not look around. When they stopped, on the fascist, started knocking on the doors of my neighbours asking for a chair. But she got scared and did not open up the door. In a while I saw the Germans carrying a stool from the factory weigher's booth. The factory gates were wide open. Then the officers threw a rope on the crossbar and made a loop. The first one led to the gallows was the girl. Masha Bruschina, along with the two others, including a 16-year-old boy, was taken to be executed by hanging in front of the Minsk Kristall Yeast Brewery and Distillery Plant. She was led up to the stool which had been placed under the beam. Then in front of a group of German soldiers, the noose was placed around her neck. It was said, when they put her on the stool, the girl turned her face towards the fence. The executioners wanted her to stand with her face to the crowd, but she turned away and that was that. No matter how much they pushed her and tried to turn her, she remained standing with her back to the crowd. Only then did they kick the stool away from under her. Even until the very last moments, Masha Bruschina resisted and refused to give over anything to the Nazi occupiers as they forced her to face the crowd. But then the stool was removed and she was left hanging, and a plaque remained around her neck for three days to strike fear into the hearts of the people of Minsk who walked past. For years she remained the unknown girl of Minsk after her execution, and today a memorial marks the site of this, but the rest of her family were killed inside the Minsk ghetto during the Second World War, and today she is remembered in history for her defiance, and Masha Bruschina is linked to other heroic young women, such as Lepa Radic. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.